Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to MSB lecture series on the chemistry of main group elements. MSB stands for MS Balakrishna. In my last lecture while discussing valence bond theory, I mentioned about the geometry and shape of water molecule. Now let me continue uh, from where I had stopped. Let us look into the fundamental uh, molecule that was used by Linus Pauling to explain the hybridization concept that is methane. Uh, I was supposed to begin with methane uh, since I wanted to go in the sequence uh, I started with uh, first uh, beryllium dichloride because it has sp hybridization and then I discussed about sp2 and also I discussed about sp3 hybridization in case of water molecule where we have two bonded pair and lone, two lone pairs. Now let us consider methane and in methane we have carbon as well as hydrogen. Carbon electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So prior to the hybridization this one of the s electron is promoted to the p orbital to have s1 p3 electronic configuration. Now these uh, 4 orbital will combine together to form 4 sp3 hybrid orbits having 1 electron each and now they are disposed tetrahedrally and each sp3 with 1 electron would combine with 1 s1 orbital of 4 hydrogen atoms to form 4 ch bonds. You can see here so sp3 hybrid 4 orbitals are disposed in this fashion and now they combine with 4 hydrogen atoms to form 4 CH bonds and this is a highly symmetric uh, tetrahedral molecule having the bond angles of 109.5 and I have also listed many other examples all tetravalent carbon compounds whether it is tetrabromo methane, tetrafluoromethane all show sp3 hybridization besides this one uh, molecules having one lone pair such as ammonia ph3 h2o sio4 4 minus so4 2 minus perchlorate in all central atoms possess this sp3 hybridization and they have tetrahedral geometries you can always make an attempt to write uh, in the same way for the rest of the molecules i have shown in the slide so let us look into ethylene. In case of ethylene, uh, it is slightly different. Uh, here once the electron is promoted to one of the uh, empty p orbital, now one of the p orbital is not utilized, only two p orbitals and one s orbital will combine together to form sp2 orbitals having one electron each like this ok. So these are at an angle of 120 so that means two carbon atoms would position in this fashion so these three these three are sp2 hybrid orbitals having one electron each and these terminal 2 here and 2 here 4 uh, sp2 orbitals with one electron will combine with hydrogen atom in this fashion to make two 4 covalent bonds. Now we have this empty orbital there at orthogonal to this sp2 plane. Uh, so they have one electron each. Now these two will 
orient in this fashion they orient in this fashion orient in this fashion you to form a pi bond that means they interact in this fashion to form pi bond as a result what happens in case of this one we have a sigma bond and we have a pi bond and here these two are covalent bonds for example in this ethylene molecule we have 1 2 3 4 5 five covalent bonds are there and one pi bond is there so uh, this is also covalent bond so uh, five sigma bonds and one pi bond is there you can see this one in the in this slide here see this how sp2 are oriented and now the terminal ones are combined with four hydrogen atoms and now we have two p orbitals on each carbon having one electron they combine together to form pi bond so this is how we can explain bonding in case of ethylene molecule using this hybridization concept or valence bond theory let us look into one more example acetylene again in acetylene uh, uh, carbon promotes one of the s electron to the p orbital and we have a situation like this So, now we have four uh, orbitals having one electron each. So, in case of acetylene carbon utilizes only one of the p orbital preferably p z and these two are combined together to form two s p orbital having one electron each. they are oriented in this fashion. So, they have one electron each here, one electron here. As usual, these uh, one of the s p from each carbon will combine with uh, uh, hydrogen atom and now we have two p orbitals on each one having one electron each and now they, they are overlapping in this fashion. In this fashion. So, now what we have is in case of acetylene we have one sigma bond, one sigma bond, another sigma bond and one pi bond, another pi bond. So, that means in this one we have 1, 2, 3, sigma bonds and two pi bonds. So, you can explain bonding in acetylene. We have arranged two s p orbitals having one electron each and unutilized two p orbitals having one electron each and they come close to each other to establish a bond and now this is how you can explain the bonding. Now, only I have shown sigma bond in this one. Uh, three sigma bonds I have shown. Now, these two p orbitals and these two p orbital will interact together. Similarly, this two p orbital and this two p orbital will interact together uh, to form two pi bonds having two electron each. Pi bond begins and you get acetylene molecule like this. So, this is how you can explain in the presence of three bonds between two carbon atoms in acetylene. Let us look into higher hybridization let us consider the example of PCL5. PCL5 central atom is P and from VCPI theory we have predicted uh, it to be having trigonal bipyramidal geometry. Here we had 10 pairs of electrons so that is was giving uh, 5 steric number and all are bonded. So, when the steric number is 5 the geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. So, let us look into it uh, from valence bond theory. So, let me write uh, of course, here we have to utilize d orbital and in case of uh, phosphorus the electronic configuration is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 6, 3 s 2 and 3 p 3. So, here uh, we have 3 d orbital also, but that is empty. So, let me write in this fashion empty orbital of high energy 
this is 3D. Next we have uh, 3p orbital having one electron each and then we have 3s having two electrons. Okay. So now uh, basically this s orbital and this p orbital and one of the d orbital will combine together to form sp3 dehydration 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons are there. These 5 electrons will occupy uh, 5 sp3 dehybrid orbitals and these 5 sp3 hybrid orbitals are oriented in a trigonal bipyramidal fashion. Let me show you in that one in the next slide. So, this is how the structure looks like for PCL5 we all know. Let us see how this hybrid orbitals orient and combine with uh, uh, 3p orbital of chlorine. So, this is how these 5 sp 3 d hybrid orbitals are oriented and now they combine with 3p orbitals to form PCL5. So, you can explain very conveniently uh, the structure of PCL5 using hybridization concept. So, let us look into another example of group 16 element that is sulfur appearing at maximum arc state that is SF6 sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, so, let me write again the electronic configuration of sulfur 1s2 it is below oxygen 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. If we do not remember the electronic configuration, we should try to remember uh, in to which group it belongs and then also we should remember what name it is given to the group. If a, if a particular name exists for a particular group like nitrogen, chalcogen in that fashion. So, we know that sulfur is below oxygen. So, its electronic configuration is same as that of oxygen. Once you know that one, you should be able to write the electronic configuration. This is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Now, again we have high energy d orbitals. Like this we have 4 electrons here and then in we have 2 electrons. Now, now these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 since we have 2 extra electrons they can be promoted to 2 d orbital. As a result what happens it utilizes 2 more orbitals to form 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 hybrid orbitals composed of 1s and 3p and 2d. So, 1 is to 3 is to 2 and now each one has 1 electron each. So, there are 6 orbitals are there. They are uh, disposed to the 6 corners of an octahedron. So, this is the uh, structure of uh, SF6 it is octahedral. And this is how 6 sp3 d2 orbitals are disposed uh, along z minus z, x minus x, y minus y axis. And now they combine with 6 2p orbitals of fluorine atoms to form this octahedral molecule. Of course, here we are utilizing d orbital and say that they have the sulfur undergoes sp3 d2 hybridization when we go to the molecular orbital, it essentially gives a different combination of atomic orbital and different structure altogether. Of course, uh, the geometry is octahedral, but molecular orbital depicts its formation in a different way. I should tell you more about that one when we go to the group 16 chemistry. Because uh, SF6 as well as SICS 
six two minus, they are called hypervalent molecules. Okay, so I will elaborate about these things and also how we are utilizing the atomic orbitals to explain the bonding in SF6 as well as SiCl6 2 minus while discussing the chemistry in the respective groups. So, let me take a simple example before I proceed further uh, to make you familiar with uh, valence bond theory especially for uh, polyatomic molecules. Let us take a simple example as acetone. And let us try to look into the bonding of each carbon atom and also oxygen atom and describe the structure of the entire acetone molecule using hybridization concept. So, now let me first write the structure of acetone. This is the structure of acetone. Here we have four atoms are there besides hydrogen, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon and then this oxygen. And from the structure I have written, you should be able to clearly see the, the kind of hybridization one can think of for each atom present here. And this carbon should be of sp3 in nature and this carbon should be of sp3 in nature and this carbon should be of sp2 in nature and this oxygen should be of sp2 in nature. Okay. So, let us see how that happens. Now, without going into the electronic configuration, since you are all familiar with the electronic configuration, what I will do is I will simply write the corresponding hybridization and the corresponding orbital and I show their overlapping to uh, describe the structure of this acetone molecule. So, here this one. So, this carbon has undergone sp3 hybridization having 4 sp3 orbitals with 1 electron each and 3 sp3 orbitals will combine with hydrogen atoms. And then this one will combine with 1 of the sp2. And this will also combine with one of the sp2 and one sp2 is here. Okay, so, here uh, this carbon has undergone sp2, so it has one electron here in one of the p orbital and then oxygen also undergone sp2 hybridization. So, that means that you may not be familiar. Let me write in case of oxygen how to explain sp2 hybridization. In case of oxygen we have 2 s2, 2 p4, of course, 1 s2. And now, if this oxygen undergoes sp2, in that case what I should do is we have a situation like this. So, we have a situation one electron here, one electron here. So, heat it undergoes sp2 hybridization. When it forms 3 sp2, you should remember 2 of them have 2 electrons and 1 has 1 electron. So, that means here essentially oxygen this 1 electron, 1 electron here and these are lone pairs, 2 electrons are there and we have 1 p with this electron here and these two will combine together to form a pi bond. So, essentially in case of acetone now I can write one C C bond, another C C bond and three H bonds, C H bonds and here one sigma bond and one pi bond and oxygen and lone pairs. So, no matter how complicated the molecule looks like, if you start one at a time, we should be able to write and describe the structure of any such molecules. For example, you can take even bigger molecules and you can make an attempt to write in this fashion uh, to make yourself familiar with this hybridization concept. So, let me uh, introduce one more term uh, that is often used in valence bond theory that is Bent's rule. What it says? 
more electronegative substituents prefer hybrid orbitals having less s character that is more p character and more electropositive substituents prefer orbitals having more s character that is having less p character. That means, if you consider a homoleptic poly molecule such as methane or tetrabromomethane, we have sp3 hybrid orbitals all are equivalent and each sp3 has 25 percent s character and 75 percent p character. But when we have uh, heteroleptic molecules for example, dichloromethane, difluoromethane and here we can identify two different type of peripheral atoms bound to carbon. One of them is more electronegative, another one is less electronegative or more electropositive. So, in that case Bent's rule comes very handy in explaining the bonding especially the variation in their bond angle. So, how to again I define the Bent's rule with this information. So, more electronegative substituents prefer hybrid orbitals having less s character and more electropositive substituents prefer orbitals having more s character. So, this is how you can explain Bent's rule. Then we can use this Bent's rule successfully to explain bonding in molecules such as methane or trifluoromethane or difluoromethane etcetera. Let us take CH4. So, I have given here three examples, one is methane, other one is tetrafluoromethane and the third one is difluoromethane. It can be difluoromethane or even can also write dichloromethane. In all the four cases we are using sp3 hybrid orbitals of carbon combining with either hydrogen or fluorine or chlorine corresponding orbitals to form these molecules. In case of uh, methane and in case of tetrafluoromethane no issues all bonds are identical as a result uh, still uh, each sp3 has 25 percent s character and 75 percent p character. But that is not the case when we go here. So, here according to Bent's rule, two CF bonds utilizes sp3 orbitals having more p character and these two CH bonds utilizes orbitals having less p character or more s character. That means, I can write in this fashion two CF bonds utilizes sp3 plus x and 2 CH utilizes sp3 minus x. That means, here automatically you can see here in these cases uh, p contribution is more whereas, in these two cases uh, p contribution is less or in other words s contribution is more here and s contribution is less here. So, what would happen on the overall bond angle if this anomaly exists? So, in case of uh, uh, sp3 uh, imagine if the p character increases you just imagine the combination of 3 p orbital in the absence of s it would be 90 degree with respect to each other because p x p y p z are orthogonal to each other the angle between them is 90 degrees and if s character decreases as a result what happens the angle will start decreasing it will come close to the 90 degrees. On the other hand if s character increases okay, it will go from 90 to the maximum tetrahedral angle of 109.5. So, with this information we should be able to write and predict the, uh, the 
variation in the bond angle uh, just simply based on the electronegativity of the atoms that are making the bond with the carbon. So, in this case we can say clearly that the FCF bond angles are lower, smaller that means I can say F C F angles are smaller than H C H angles. In fact, this is more pronounced in case of pyramidal molecules of uh, phosphorus, arsenic and antimony. For example, if you take PH3, SB, H3 or ASH3 or the corresponding trichlorides, this bent rule is more pronounced. Again, we can explain there by looking into the, the difference in electronegativity of these atoms. And besides this one can also use some other means to explain this one that is simply looking into the electronegativity difference between the central atom and the peripheral atom. So, I hope it is clear here. So, here uh, the sp3 in case of cf and ch are different in case of cf sp3 has more p character in case of here sp3 has less p character when the less p character is there angles are close to the uh, tetrahedral or greater than 90 or in case of uh, uh, fluorine where the p character is more that is coming close to the 90 degrees. So, let us uh, look into one example here. Uh, the you can see that e example given here why x p x bond angles for the series of p o x 3 molecules. This is p o x 3 molecule. this is POX3 molecule where X equals bromine, X equals Cl, X equals fluorine. So, here angles are given uh, X, P, X angles are given here and in this case it is 104.1, 103.3, 104.1, 103.3, 103.3, 1 1 so, that means angles are decreasing when you go from bromine to fluorine on the other hand angle is increasing when you go from fluorine to chlorine to bromine. So, again here same analogy one can use the electronegativity of uh, the atoms are decreasing ok, electronegativity of halide ions are decreasing as a result what happens the p character is increasing as a result when the p character is increasing the angle will decrease. Yeah. Angle will decrease of course, here in all the angles are uh, less than uh, uh, 100. Uh, here the bends rule may not be very uh, precise to explain, but we can explain using the electronegativity difference between p and x here. For example, in case of fluorine let us take this one here and let us also consider this uh, chlorine and this bromine. We can see the electronegativity of these atoms fluorine, chlorine, bromine is uh, decreasing. Uh, when it is decreasing what would happen is the electrons uh, stay almost midway between here and here. So, in this one electrons are more uh, towards fluorine and here it is less and here it is less. That means, as electron density coming more and more towards the peripheral atoms the angle start shrinking ok. On the other end if the uh, ele electrons are coming more and more towards the central atom angle will be increasing. So, with this analogy you can see that in this one since the electron density is more directed towards the fluorine. So, here not much electron density is there. So, the angle will shrink so that it can give more space for this oxygen double bond. On the other hand here it is less electronegative obviously you can expect angle to be little uh, larger and in this case angle can be even larger because little more, more electron density is going or less electron density is coming towards the uh, halide ions. So, you should be able to explain why this is happening in case of uh, uh, XPX the trend can be explained. Uh, you can see here uh, uh, 
same example I have shown. So, essentially uh, one can also analyze uh, same thing in case of water and F2O. For example, if you want to look into the uh, case of uh, water and F2O, you should be able to tell which angle. For example, if I write something like this, you should be able to tell uh, HOH and FOF which angle is larger. This angle is larger and this is smaller because here the electron density is something like this. So, that since electron density drops towards towards uh, drops towards fluorine atoms, okay, here angle shrinks so that it can give more space for this lone pairs to minimize interelectronic repulsion. So, whereas here this angle will be little larger because electron density is residing more on uh, oxygen atom. Okay. Okay. So, that means uh, now no matter what molecule is given simply by looking into the electronegativity difference between the central atom and the peripheral atom, you should try to remember three structures I am writing here. One is like this, one is like this and one is like this. So, here if electron negativity of A is more, more electrons will stay here as a result angle shrinks, angle will shrink small angle and here electron density is coming here. So, angle uh, angle increases here sorry. Uh, in this case larger angle because lone pairs are at central atom uh, it increases. Okay, so last one. Okay. So, in this case uh, uh, the electron density is moving away from A, so angle is small. So, here it is intermediate. So, just by looking into the electron negativity difference between the central atom and the uh, peripheral atom, you should be able to remember these three. Once you remember these things, you can see what is the consequence of this one on the bond angle. In the first case bond angle will be normal, in the second case bond angle will be larger, in the third case bond angle will be smaller. So, this is how you can use valence bond theory to uh, almost understand the uh, bond parameters such as bond distance and bond angle very clearly. So, now I conclude uh, valence bond theory. Of course, in my next class I will be telling you about the limitations we come across in valence bond theory and I will proceed to the molecular orbital theory. So, I have a pleasant reading. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.